Hi, and welcome back to another episode of The Kristen Omdahl Show. Today I have a special treat for you. Allow me to introduce you to Krista Patel of The Secret Yarnery. Hi, Krista. I'm Kristen. It's very nice to meet you. You too, Kristen. Thank you so much for inviting me over. <laughs> You're welcome. Your room is absolutely gorgeous. I love your color display. Thank you so much. It, took it, a looks while. Like, <laughs> it looks like so much fun to work on, though. It's absolutely beautiful. You know, you, every time you walk by, you pick something new. You're like, oh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> I could see them all speaking to you at some point, for yeah, sure. Exactly. So you did a yarn unboxing this morning. Is that what you said? Yes, I did. That's why I'm like, I'm like sweating. <laughs> and I, well, I thought, yeah, anyway, I unboxed it all and got it put away. Almost. There's still a little bit more to go, but yeah, had to rehaul it. <laughs> well, you were nominated by two, we have two fans or viewers or students that, um, nominated you one Margaret and one Sharon and they had some questions for you as well and one oh, of the questions was where does your yarn come from I usually do all my shopping at Ice Yarns okay okay they said that yeah. there was an interesting story behind where your yarn came from so that is <laughs> is that is it somewhere or where are they from are they from they're, where they're from Turkey that's what I thought no. okay yeah but there's not really a yarn shop here. There was, there is a yarn shop now. It opened about a year ago, but until then there was like no yarn in my country at all. So I had to kind of, I got used to importing what I was going to use and now right. it's just how I do it. Okay. Well, that sounds much more convenient then. So for <laughs> those of you that don't know, uh, could you tell us where you live? I live in Nairobi, Kenya. And how did you so, get there? Like, I, your, your accent sounds Canadian, I think. I'm from Canada, you. too. <laughs> Are you? Yes. <laughs> Everyone's like, you sound American. I'm like, I don't have any Canadian friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. But, <laughs> but I think I speak, I don't know. I don't know about, about my accent. But um, I was traveling. My sister was, my sister was traveling in Japan, met a guy from Kenya, fell in love with him, came to Kenya to see how Kenya is and loved it so she moved here and then when she was having her first baby she asked me to come over to help her out so I did and then I loved it I went back to Canada I was living in Vancouver packed up all my stuff put it in like one year storage kind of thing thanks dad and moved over here for a year met my husband um and we got married and that was the end of it wow wow and you yeah. have I, I've lived in other countries before too and there's so much more to learning to live somewhere than you might realize when you're just a traveler. Is the how easy was it for you to learn the language or was English still pretty prominent? I still, I still don't, I still don't speak the language. Sadly, oh. I wish I did. <laughs> I can, like, I can fake it enough to, like you know. But then the people start talking. I'm like, okay, never mind. <laughs> it's a, but it but sounds like you don't need it then. No, everybody speaks English. Everybody here speaks like four or five languages. It's just me who speaks English. So um, I wish I wish I spoke it uh, more. I wish I knew the language, but languages are not, they're just difficult for me. Like I get it all mumble jumbled and I'm like, Ugh. so it's not my thing. I can crochet, but language <laughs> is not so much. <laughs> How did you learn to crochet or when did you learn to crochet? When I was a kid, my mom was really, really strict. She probably still is really strict, but... <laughs> Uh, she made us, well, I grew up in Saskatchewan, so it was like, you know, winters and, you know, living inside a house, freezing, kind of. So we, she taught us one new handicraft every winter. So we had to learn knitting, crochet, hand sewing, machine sewing, needlepoint. And every winter, no matter what, we were like forced to do that one thing. We had a project and it had to be finished before we could wear like uh, rubber boots in the springtime. I always wanted our rubber boots to go outside. That meant it wasn't winter anymore. I always tried to do it in April. So it, we couldn't do that until our project was finished. So oh, it worked out. Deadline. I love it. <laughs> so did you, stick with, did you stick with crochet from that point on or did you take a break? No. From it? I did sewing. I, I sewed a lot forever. I have like six sewing machines in a whole room. Like I have this, but in fabric. So sewing was my thing that I stuck with. I, it's, it's just so practical and... Um, easy I guess but I I can't teach sewing people are like why don't you teach us sewing? I can't because 
I learned it so young. I don't, re- I'm not going to remember the, the hard bits. Do you know what I mean? Right. I'm just going to be like, of course, it's a straight line. So <laughs> that's what I stuck with. <laughs> and harder to get a, I mean, it would be harder, I- impractical in person, everyone bringing their machine or even to get the right angles. I think it would be harder to film also. And the sound too. I yeah, tried once, I did right. a lining on a crochet bag. I was like, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> it was like so, <laughs> so it was awkward and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's something, but no, I just do that for myself. So did you if pick crochet back up before you got to Kenya or once you got to Kenya? Oh, uh, once I got to Kenya, I, I was bored, stiff, like corpse bored, like really bored. It's, <laughs> it was difficult to get used to living here. Like first year, I loved it. It was great. The second year, you're like, I can't go to Starbucks. You know, like there's so many things you can't do that just kind of right. all of a sudden hit you. Like you're living in a jail, everything's prison, everything's awful. And it's not, but as a socially, you don't have it. Do you know what I mean? So it was really hard. So I did, my husband was so sweet. He took me around everywhere here and bought me every single art supply, craft supply, anything like art easels, watercolor, acrylic, like everything. Cause he didn't want, he wanted me to stay. He was like, you gotta stay, you gotta be happy. <laughs> so <laughs> so he loaded me up. Yeah. <laughs> So he loaded me up with everything and I, I, you know, I did a little bit of other things, but you know, not really my thing. And then I, I did knitting first. I picked knitting up again, knit a blanket. And I was like, that just took so long. So <laughs> stop that one. And then I did crochet and I knitted, knitted, tor- terrible. I crocheted this big blanket, but I made my starting chain. I had DK weight yarn and a four millimeter hook. That was the biggest you could get here. And okay. I didn't know better. So I made it eight feet wide, oof, (laughs) like what am I doing? And I got a book from one of our stores here. We have a good, we have good books here, books are good. So I got a book, hardcovers are cheaper than magazines. That's just trivia for you right there. (laughs) So I got a hardcover book for crochet stitches and then that blanket I turned into doing like practicing new stitches along popcorns or whatever I felt like (laughs) a sampler and then I quit when it was like about four feet I'm like it's a bed runner (laughs) (laughs) but I still have it and it's a nice memory that is so did you notice there was a difference between the way people crocheted in Kenya versus Canada or were you not really seeing how other people were crocheting in real life yet I no, I wasn't at that time but I did try to start like an initiative to like empower local uh like underprivileged women I suppose to crochet so I bought yarn and crochet hooks and I went out to a rural place to kind of like teach crochet to these uh, ladies and starting and finishing like they can get it down they can do like a granny square and stuff but starting and finishing it like out of I think I had 40 ladies and two of them would do like a proper knot in the beginning and a proper knot at the end the rest you could just pull and it would just unravel Oh, I guess it's like, yeah, (laughs) I think it's like, you know, they they don't want to waste the yarn of like, you know, leaving a tail to sew in. They don't do that here. It's like, no, you just knot it really good and cut it right there. So that that's different. Wow. And then so from the how did you go from from how did you go from that to then teaching classes? How did that all evolve? Um, I, I started, a, well, it was the same initiative, actually, to raise money for an orphanage. And there was a lady that I had um, that contacted um, the orphanage and she just had her baby. She's like, come and get my baby. I go on to leave the hospital. And it was like, do you want to give your baby up for adoption like you really do? Or you just have to get out of the hospital and go back to work. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you if you could afford it, would you keep your baby? Mm-hmm. And she was like, yeah, I would totally keep my baby, but I can't. Oh, so I was no, like, what no. can I teach her that she could make money and basically breastfeed at the same time? Because that's all you really have to do with a baby. You know what I mean? Until right. they can, you know, go somewhere. So I, so then I was like, I can't teach her sewing because there's so many sewing, uh, um, what do you call it? Like programs here or charities mm-hmm. and stuff that do sewing. And they're so inexpensive to buy things that I can't price even a zipper for something I could buy a change purse for. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. Okay. I can't compete with it. So I was like, what if I did yarn? Cause no one's doing that. I could teach her crochet and then uh, I could sell her things. This was the first time I tried that. So I taught her how to do some things, but there was a craft fair coming up in a couple of weeks, like three weeks. 
So I was hoping she could make little Christmas ornaments, like little circles, and then I could put the little bobble thing on and we could just sell like packs of six or something just so she would have some income. Mm -hmm. But she was slow also to learn, like it's that starting and finishing that was like, I don't like difficult. So I ended up in a panic, just throwing some yarn in a bag with a written crochet pattern and a crochet hook, like a crochet kit. Mm -hmm. And I sold those at this craft sale instead of selling a finished item. And then everybody that was coming by was like, oh, I don't, I want the kit, but I don't know how to do it. Can you teach me? And I was like, thank you for being polite. So nice of you. But like, like, you know, I thought they weren't being serious. So the next day I brought a sign up form just so I had something like I thought that's what I probably should do. And I think I had like 40 or 36 people sign up and wow. I thought again, people are just being polite. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, you go to these things and you want to tell the lady, oh, you're doing such a good job. Sure. I'll sign up, but you don't mean it. You know what I mean? You're just being right. nice. So I didn't do anything about the list. And then um, two people were like calling me being like, uh, when are the classes starting? Have I missed it? When did they start? Where are they? How much? Like, I was like, what? Am I really going to do it? So I just set aside, like I'm going to be Saturday morning, nine o'clock at our coffee shop. And then I'll, you know, I'll bring some yarn and hooks and we'll make, um, I think we made uh, little hot, what are they, coffee cup coasters, just a little square. Okay. And I'm like, you know, we'll just do that. And there was 19 people that showed up. Wow. And I was like, how am I going to teach 19 people? <laughs> but thankfully, one lady from South Africa, she was already like she brought her friend that couldn't crochet. So she had like half the room and I had half the room. And I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> so that's how it started in the deep end. <laughs> now, backing up for just a second in that kit, you said you had a written pattern. So were you already writing your own patterns at that point? Yeah, I was just I was literally single crochet. Coaster, oh, OK. So like nothing fancy. Just literally okay. back and forth until it's a square and that's the end of it. Okay, so then so, you just printed yeah. those off at home or at a local yep. printer or something? Oh, you had just a at, at home. home. I didn't okay. I do even use, I even used a photo from the internet. I didn't even have one finished to like put on the, on the cover. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but it, it works. works. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So then from those classes, I would love for you to tell the story of how you decided to do video from the classes. Oh, that was, so I had a class every Saturday. So, and that was like, it was so fun. It, it was kind of sad. Cause I had, I like told my husband, I'm like, oh, I have to go to work. Hmm? Cause I don't work. I'm a housewife. So I was like, I got to finally say it. Right. I'm like, oh, I have to go to work. And I'm like, oh no, I can't, you know, you have to get the kids breakfast. You know, I have to go to work. So he came there one morning, probably about one month in, like, so four classes in and he came to get coffee and he looks over and we're just all having a great time, like laughing and having breakfast and crocheting like a great time. And he's like, yeah, you can't call that work. <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> so at one of my classes, one of my friends, my students, she would come to class and she'd literally be exactly where she left off on in the last class. She's like, oh, I picked it up. Okay. I was going to do it. And I forgot how, like, I don't even know how to do this part. So we were like, okay, so it took her, she was just always stuck. She loved doing it. She's to totally crocheting now, but she was, she would be getting stuck. So she was like, okay, I can go home and I can finish this row. I think we're making a little blanket of some sort. So she can finish the row, but at the end of the row, how is she going to change color? So we're like, okay, fine. We'll just take a video of it. Of this is how you change color. So that's my very first video is at the coffee shop just with a phone on top of my hands, just showing her for, for her to take home of how to change color so she could do one more row that week. Wow. And then that, yeah. So then, okay, so did other people ask for the video or how did, how did it make you think to share with more people? Well, I didn't think to share with more people because I didn't think people would, eat, I didn't think right. that they were looking for me. <laughs> I was just right. like, my, my goal with my channel was just to keep my students um, like have a tutorial if so have a tutorial available for them to follow along with the pattern while they're at home so they so they could be done with that project and be able to start the next project the next week so I would only do left-handed videos if it was my left-handed students who were going to be doing it I would only do a video if uh, like I knew that some of my students were going to be working on it like it was very customized to what my students needed and also the speed like whoever was working on that project, I was be, I'd be talking at their speed. I knew what they could do and I'd be walking them through it. So I still get some comments from my older videos being like, oh, you talk too fast. And I'm like, it wasn't for you. 
<laughs> I, I totally get that. Right. Because if you're doing an intermediate class, you don't need to tell them every single step of a double crochet. That's only for a beginner who doesn't know the stitches yet. I totally agree. Yeah. I get the same thing sometimes. And it's like, okay, thank you for your feedback. You know, you yeah. can't to say. <laughs> I'm like, I agree with you. It was, it was too fast. So, but <laughs> how, did, how did your channel grow from there? Like, did you, did you get, did you get some sort of exposure for someone? Was it just naturally, was it just slow growth? Yeah, it just started people, more people started watching and then mm -hmm. they'd comment and then I, you know, comment back. I'm like, Hey, and then you kind of have friends and then you kind of have more friends and then you kind of have more friends and then you have a channel. Right. So right. It, was just, it was just organically like that. What kind of equipment do you use? Just crochet, just, I like, I prefer clover crochet hooks and any old pair of scissors and a good tape measure. That's like my thing. Oh, and, and, and sharp what about your people. videoing equipment. Do you use, do you have oh, professional lights or do you, Not really. are you in natural light? I, I was in natural light for like probably two years. I just filmed by my window. I zip tied my tripod to my window and then I just have to sit there. And then it was kind of awkward because you had to wait. So you needed the daylight, but you couldn't have sunshine because you know, you'd get the too bright. And then it couldn't be, it was, it was so particular. So there was like a two hours in the day or an hour and a half where I could go and film. And uh, I remember those days, but I'm so glad I don't do that anymore. Now I've just built myself like a dark cabinet so I can just like a desk cabinet because I was so cold last summer. It was like so cold. So I built this little cabinet thing and I just sit inside it like a little hobbit house. And then it's a, now I'm totally artificial light. Well, and then you have that much more freedom. I, I went through the same process as well. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the other questions that um, the people that nominated you asked was, do you have, are there groups now or different types of events with crochet currently that you go to or could go to in your area? I don't think so. There might be, but I'm, I just stay at home now with like COVID out there and stuff. It's like, mm -hmm. uh, I'm just, I stayed home because of COVID and now I'm just really used to it. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm totally fine staying at home. So I don't, I don't really, um, I just crochet here by myself. Well, with everybody, but <laughs> by myself, actually, right. yeah. Do your kids go to school or do you homeschool them or are they remote? How does, how, where do they go to school? They have online schooling. They used to be going to school until well, one year before COVID. Uh, we put them in an online school in California and that was really good. But the time, like the differences of the times for the teachers to be online and stuff was a bit awkward. So we put them in uh, the same kind of program, but here locally in Kenya. So they have, it's really great actually, but they have their own teacher. Each kid has their own teacher for, and they have different teachers per subject. And they're each an hour and a half line, hour and a half long, like on Zoom or Google Meet. So they're like really, really taught. Like they can't be like, oh, I didn't know, or she didn't answer my question. It's like, no, you are with the teacher for an hour and a half. Hmm? A lot more so accountability. That, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that that's really great. And now even at, like COVID's getting like better, but we're happy with that system for now. So walk me through a, a typical day for you. It sounds like you're juggling a lot of things. So could you tell me what what a typical day looks like from when you wake up? Probably wake up at maybe exactly 630, 625, 635, like clockwork. Switch the dogs around. I have night dogs and day dogs and house dogs. How many so I dogs? switch those around. So, well, I have six, but oh, they're all in pairs. Like I have really like big, like security dogs. And then I have English bulldogs. And then I have dogs that are nice to people. So <laughs> they're all on a rotation. So I get up in the morning, switch, put the big dogs away and let the bulldogs out. Then go and make coffee. Hopefully no one else is up. And I try to have one cup of coffee without talking to anybody. That's like my goal. That means I'm gonna have a great day. So I have my cup of coffee, turn on my computer, reply to my comments. I love my comments. Like that, make, you know, you always find such a nice comment. You're like, oh, I love my life. So I do that. Then get the kids up for school, breakfast, kids are in school. And then I usually have some cleaning up to do. Usually in here, my own messes, it's terrible. Clean up after myself, get some computer work done if I haven't been that messy. Snack for the kids on break time, around 10, 10 20, they have a break, 10 o'clock feed the kids, get them back in class. That gives me another hour and a half where I can come in. And that's when I actually get things done. 
I can do like a lot of computer work, filming, editing something because I know I have an hour and a half with the kids all being quiet. And then 12 o'clock, they're out for another 10 minutes. That's not so bad. And then back to school till 1.30, 1.30 lunch. Then after lunch, do something with the kids, take them outside, do some sports or not sports, watch them do sports, um, <laughs> something like that. And then just kind of hang out with them in the afternoon. I try to get all of my stuff done, my personal stuff done in the morning. And then I kind of pitter patter coast down and I'm in bed by about eight o'clock. I would imagine you are. That sounds yeah. like a jam packed day. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you, are you producing new patterns and how often are you producing, are you releasing new videos? Uh, well, I've come up with a new schedule. So I do a tutorial every Sunday and a podcast on Saturdays, a live chat on Fridays. And then I do like a class. I started a beginning series this year. Like just, I want a playlist of like all the steps. Like if I was teaching you how to crochet or if I was like, you know, on like Udemy or whatever it was. That would be exactly all the steps I would do. So I'm putting together like a series, like a chronological series of, I don't know anything to, I'm crocheting all these other things. So one of those comes out on Thursdays. So that is my upload schedule here. Okay, that's that's a lot. And so then, and then written patterns separate from that or in, co yeah. in conjunction with that? It, I try to do a written pattern for the tutorial on Sunday. So the tutorial okay. and a written pattern is all kind of together. I try to do it that way. Cause now I'm like, like, I don't know. Yeah. So you probably make all your own samples then too. Yeah. Right. I, I, I usually, I usually crochet it. Like I figure out my pattern, I crochet it, I build it. And then I will film like bits of it, like smaller pieces of it or whatever. And I'll keep the big thing like that last stitch to like film the last stitch on the big piece, but I'm usually kind of just cheap and do a smaller one. For me, I find it easier because I find a way of remembering the pattern as I'm building it myself. So that when I'm doing the tutorial, I'm like, oh, this is how you can remember that. Or this is a good thing you can think about when you're doing this part, or you won't forget this if you think about that. Right, do you have pattern testers or editors that you work with? Uh, I have one. She always tells me what's wrong. She's like, okay, this is wrong. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. Yeah, everybody needs I, one, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And do you need, but I don't have like a real editor. Do you do, uh, do you add, do you incorporate charts in any of your patterns? No, but I want to. I totally want to. Mm -hmm. I haven't found any, I haven't looked in, I, I looked about three years ago and there was no good, I couldn't find any decent software program that made sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure there's probably one out there now. I should look again. I'd I love to use love Adobe to Illustrator. Do you know how to use Adobe Illustrator? That's what I think I have to do. Yeah. No, I don't know how at all, but I think that's what I have to do. And then I'm like, oh, more Adobe. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's what I have to do. That's, that's Is what, that what I you use. Do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how long did it take you to learn that one? Like how Years. to do your chart? Honestly, <laughs> it's an evolution. You know, when I look at the charts I made in my first year of doing, I was like, oh my gosh. That's not the quality of my work now, but just like with anything, we don't crochet the way we did on day one either, right? I mean, no matter, right, what yeah. you're, no matter what you're doing, you get better at it. And, you know, I, I kind of taught myself along the way, mm -hmm. so it's just an evolution, but it, it took me years to actually get it to where I really wanted to be. Yeah, well, that's good. I'll look so into that. that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> Yeah, I moved to, I, I do my editing on Adobe uh, Premiere Pro and that, okay. that was, that's still a learning curve. Like I'm still learning that one. So I'm like, oh, I don't know if I could manage another Adobe. You know, it, it's usually works so well, like it's such a good program, but it's not beginner friendly. Usually in my experience, right. it's like deep end, there you are, swim, <laughs> but I'll get, yeah, I can give it a try. Well, kudos to you for Adobe Premiere because I, I'm still with iMovie. I, I haven't taken the leap to the professional <laughs> video editing. It looks and it looks intimidating to me. And it you know, is, until yeah. you open your mind up and are willing to learn something and you choose to think of it as intimidating, you're not ready to learn it, in my opinion. So I just yeah. have to be hungry for it and then it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. But if you don't need it, you don't need it. If it's not broke, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I'm happy <laughs> with what I do. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> well, Chris, great. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule, your busy schedule, to spend a few minutes here with me. It was so interesting to hear more about your world. And I'll share links with everything that we talked about today in the video description to bring more people to your colorful, beautiful world. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kristen. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this interview. Please leave your questions in the comments below. And if you want to check out more about Krista Patel and the Secret Yarnery, you can find all of her links in the video description below. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.